my name is Mitchell Daniels, historical interpreter and volunteer here with the Whitby Historical Society here at the historic Lindhouse Museum. Today we're going to do something very special. Today I'm going to teach you how to make breakfast in the height of the Georgian era. We're here in a very historic house here in Whitby. This was the former home of Jabez and Clarissa Lind, as well as their eight children who lived here from about 1803 right up until 1893. This house was particularly busy during the height of the War of 1812, in which the Lynns used this house, specifically this room in particular, as the tavern, serving various soldiers from the Fort York garrison, or what was known at the time as the garrison at York. Today we're going to be making a very common recipe for the Georgian era that would have been very familiar to both Jabez and Clarissa. We're going to be making a recipe known as Darby Cakes or Griddle Cakes. Darby Cakes are named after the town in the East Midlands, known simply as Darby, and can trace their roots all the way back to medieval times when they were originally known as Griddle Cakes. For this recipe, you will need one cup of currants, three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of unsalted butter, one cup of granulated sugar, one egg, and lastly, one half cup of whole milk. Now this can either be cream or homogenized milk. This recipe appears in the Cook Not Mad or Rational Cookery from 1831. Rub one pound of butter into two pounds of sifted flour. Put one pound of currants, one pound of sugar, mix all together with a half a pint of milk, one egg, two teaspoons of pearl ash, roll it out thin. Cut it into round cakes and bake them. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do to start off the prep work, which is probably the most time consuming, is we're going to want to soak our currants. So first of all, we're going to get our glass of water and our bowl of currants. So we're just going to just pour the water into the bowl. Now you want to make sure that your water is lukewarm, and that's just basically to ensure that they absorb. Okay. And we'll let that sit for about five to ten minutes or so to allow the currants to absorb the water. Next up, we're going to add the flour and baking soda together. And you want to make sure to mix this in really, really well. So we'll start off with the flour and we'll pour it into our mixing bowl. Now the original recipe calls for pearl ash. Now pearl ash, it is still available today. However, a much better alternative to use is our baking soda. So we'll add in the baking soda to the flour mix, and then you can mix it either with a spoon or with your hands. I find it best to use my hands to mix it in, so I'll just mix it all in. And once we've done that, then we can start adding in the rest of our ingredients. Next up, we're going to add in our eggs and milk. So first of all, of course, we need to break our one egg. So I'll just break it into the bowl here. We'll mix it in. So we'll grab our spoon there and start whisking the egg. And you want to make sure that it's nicely whisked before you add in your milk. So once our egg is nice and beaten, we can now add in our milk to the mixture. Just pour it in. Continue to mix it for another moment or so. So now that we've let our currants soak for a few moments, we're going to now strain out our currants into another bowl. Make sure that 
even though that we've now hydrated these currents, we want to make sure to try to get as much water out of the currents as possible before adding them back into your original bowl. So as you can see, our currents are now rehydrated, so we can now add them into our mix. And we'll do that in just a moment, but first we need to add in our sugar. Next, we're gonna add in our sugar. So we'll just pour it into our dry mix, and then we'll mix it in again with our hands. Now again, you can do this both with a mixing spoon or with your hands, but this would have been very, very traditional. And then once we've got it all mixed in, we're then gonna create a well inside the bowl to allow our wet ingredients to sit in. And we'll now add in our wet ingredients right into the center there. And now we can start to mix in our wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. Now you might need to add some additional milk as necessary as it does get quite dry quite quick. You can see the, the dough is already starting to thicken up and now we can add in our currants. Now breakfast over the years has changed quite a lot um, from the first early breakfasts back in medieval times. In fact, when breakfast was first introduced, it was originally meant just as a meal to break fast or breakfast. And so this was typically a meal enjoyed after the morning church service back in the day when the church controlled quite a lot of aspects of everyday life. Now, as we go into the Georgian era, we begin to see breakfast more as a necessity, but typically it would have been divided into two separate meal times. First of all, you would have your sort of morning breakfast, which would consist of eggs and toast. And then later on, you might have your afternoon tea. This type of recipe could be used under both circumstances. Now, as we head into the Victorian era, we begin to see Victorians starting to have full breakfast parties. Now, typically these breakfast parties would consist of coffee, tea, and hot chocolate. In fact, it was very rare to find solid chocolate during the Victorian era, as hot chocolate was just a much more enjoyable drink of the era. So you, you would often find hot chocolate in many different Victorian households. And typically these parties, even though they were breakfast parties, they could typically last the majority of the day. And so it was quite a big event. And Victorians, they loved to eat. And this was especially uh, true for their breakfasts. Now, I've mixed in the ingredients a little bit. So now I'm just going to start to work the dough with my hands. And I might need to add in a bit more flour. So maybe I'll do that. So next up, now that we've started to mix in our mixture, we can now add in our butter. So in the Victorian era, you see a lot of different recipes actually call for you to mix in the butter just with your hands. And a large part of that is because as you're putting the butter into the mixture, the heat and the warmth from your hands just naturally melts the butter and creates a very nice consistency for your dough. 